this business of dropping things into a black hole and having everything disappear has some ramifications that aren't immediately obvious. I thought of the second law of thermodynamics. It says that everything degenerates to a uniform temperature. You put a hot teacup next to a cold teacup and they come to a common temperature. That to me makes me unhappy. I have contributed to the entropy of the universe, the degree of disorganization of the universe by putting the two together. But I said when Jacob Bekenstein came in the room, then a graduate student, Jacob, if a black hole comes by, I can drop both teacups into the black hole and conceal the evidence of my crime. Well, he looked uncomfortable, but he didn't have any positive objection then. But he came back in a few months and he said, you have not avoided the entropy increase. You've just put the entropy increase in a new place. The black hole itself has entropy. Well, I, it turns out that the amount of entropy a black hole has is proportional to its area. And he gave a formula of which only the numerical constant was missing. But the, an artist to illustrate this book of mine, A Journey into Gravity and Space Time, was working with a friend of his to make a picture, the entropy proportional to the surface. And he was drawing little boxes all over the surface. And he put a, a black dot or a white dot on each, in each box. And his friend was tossing coins all the time, telling him, okay, it's heads up, put a black dot heads down, white dot. And this uh, degree of disorder shown on the surface, it gives a pictorial representation of the entropy of a black hole. Well, you remember that uh, when Bekenstein's paper came out, the whole argument seemed so implausible to Stephen Hawking and his friend that they decided to write a paper to prove it was wrong. And ultimately they came to the conclusion it's right and that this feature will show itself up in yet another way uh, that a black hole is able to evaporate electrons from its surface. So, on this picture, the geometry is jiggling at the surface. This is this irreducible zero point energy. And that jiggle is enough to make it possible for an electron now and again to be raised out of a negative energy state into a positive energy state, which in physical terms means able to have a production of a positive and a negative electron pair. And this is Hawking's famous pair production at the nuclear surface. not at the nuclear surface, at the black hole surface. But the typical physical law, like conservation of momentum, that is 
practically an absolute in today's view of physics. But if mutability is indeed a universal principle, then there will occur events in which particles collide and momentum is not conserved. Uh, one can very well say, point out, please, such an event, and I can't. But if the principle of mutability makes sense, there must exist such processes. Extremes. as in the atmosphere of a black hole, momentum, conservation, will take on a new character. Momentum will be taken up somehow by the black hole. You can say it's not so much that the law of conservation momentum is violated as it's transcended. It goes into a new form, a new Agency takes up momentum, the black hole itself. So it's in that sense that I regard the principle of mutability, the physical laws, as a, a useful guide in recognizing the existence of processes that might otherwise be overlooked. In particle physics, when we have particles collide, we may have uh, strangeness, we may have parity, we may have charge, we may have baryon number, lepton number. Uh, we have uh, a variety of numbers which serve to characterize particles and help keep track of what can happen in a collision and to find the commonality between the particles that come out and the particles that went in by saying that the strangeness is conserved or parity is conserved or not conserved and so on. Uh, but Mutability is the argument that there is nothing that can't be unconserved if we look hard enough at processes that are extreme enough. Well, somebody might very well say, what about electric charge? Yes, we don't know any process that violates the law of conservation of electric charge. So if one believes in the principle of mutability, you'll keep looking for a process where electric charge is not conserved. I am not immediately animated to go on a raging, tearing search for such a process because I don't envisage it right now. <laughs>